Hello, good evening, and welcome to another Ball Bounce in the Epic episode of Techspert Weekly, the only internet tech news show that's worse for your health than a deep fried lord sandwich. If internet news shows had a hygiene rating, this would have a straight up zero stars for making you vomit up your own kidneys. So no weird ass intro this week, partly because any new viewers last week were left slightly confused by the three minute long fake meditation tape that they were experiencing when they were just expecting some random geek person to chat them about Samsung's new laptops. And partly because I have a literal sack of smartphones and other tech just hovering there in my peripheral vision waiting for review and that's already seriously slashing into my heavy drinking and crying naked in the shower time. So without further ado, let's get on to me banging on about tech shit. Techspert Weekly. So it's been another really horrifically dry week as far as tech shenanigans goes, which basically means inevitably that next week is going to be an absolute horror show where every <laughs> decides to launch a new smartphone, probably on the same bloody day. This week, however, Xiaomi did finally launch its Billy Big Bollocks Mi 11 Ultra smartphone here in Blighty. And Xiaomi actually reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to contribute something to their little online live stream party to help them celebrate. I said, sure, f*** it, why not? So I shot them a short little video just to uh, insert in there somewhere. Unfortunately, however, Xiaomi decided that the video I shot them didn't really focus very much on the phone itself. and was mostly just me banging on about anime that I liked. Of course, I'm not really sure why that would be a problem per se. But anyway, because I went to all the trouble and effort of spending an entire 20 minutes shooting and editing that video and I don't want it to go to waste, here's a kind of special DVD extra bonus features uh, director's cut of the video that I shot. Hello kiddies, Uncle Spurt here and rejoice, rejoice because this big old slab of ridiculous tech right here, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, is finally launching here in Blighty. Oh, okay, no. Oh, okay, no. All right. Now, I've already fully reviewed this absolute unit over on TechSpot. You can go check out my coverage there. But to help Xiaomi celebrate the UK release of the Mi 11 Ultra, I thought I'd put together a highly original list type thing. And my top five uses are that funky wee screen that slaps there on the back end of this crazy morpho. So, let's do that then. Number one, stick on a wallpaper of Anna Nishikinamiya. Anna is Shimonita's student council president who knows what she wants and what she wants is to force her schoolyard crush, the hapless Tanakichi, to drink her love nectar. The less said about that, the better, to be honest, but her smile and face sure does brighten up the 11 Ultra's back end. <laughs> Number 2. Stick on a wallpaper of Akane Hiyama. Why not make the most of that poppy AMOLED screen with a colourful picture of Akane, one of Love Tyrant's most memorable characters? Okay, so Akane can be a bit stabby when she's upset, to the point where it's actually a pretty good drinking game. Take a shot every time someone gets stabbed a bit and you'll be mullered in minutes. Bonza. Number 3. Stick on a wallpaper of Mikasa Ackerman. Mikasa, from the relentlessly bleak but brilliant Attack of Titan, can certainly handle herself in a scrap, which is great news when the entire world's been overrun by massive monster thingies that treat humans like readily available pork scratchings. Number 4. Stick on a wallpaper of Saya Kisaragi. Nobody wields a katana in quite the same way as Saya from Blood Sea, although she'd even best most foes if she were swinging around a mop handle. Cons are, she's a vampire who hates humans and wants to slaughter every last one of us and drain us of our blood, but hey ho, no one's perfect. And number 5. Stick on a wallpaper of Kurisu Makase. Kurisu is undoubtedly the best use of that rear screen because she really does have it all. She's a sassy neuroscience researcher, she's in one of the best anime ever created, and yeah, what more do you really want? And so there you have it. I mean, I don't know about you, but if anything, I don't think there was enough anime references in there. I could have easily bumped it up to top 10 uses of that rear screen and just crammed in a whole load more geeky goodness. Uh, hey ho, each to their own. Uh, other news this week, really, really thin on the ground here. Uh, Google is set to launch a new, more affordable pair of its Pixel Buds True Wireless earbuds known as the Google Pixel Buds A series. And that's likely going to land uh, during the Google I.O. Developers Conference 
which kicks off on May the 18th, I believe it is. The big cities managed to leak the Google Pixel Buds A series themselves on Twitter, possibly accidentally on purpose, like most of these bloody leaks, but so far there's no other details other than it's got a fast pairing feature. And as mentioned in last week's show, there's heavy rumours that we'll see some form of new smartphone from Google at I.O. as well, or at least just like a little tease of one, potentially the Google Pixel 6, or maybe a bit of Google Pixel 5a action, we'll have to wait and see. As for other news, I mean, right here, this is really scraping the, the bottom of the barrel right now. I mean, this is kind of like the point in the house party where there's nothing left in the drinks fridge except for some like old dented expired cans of Copperberg and some dodgy yellow liquid in a bottle with a foreign label. I mean, it'll probably make you go blind and start bleeding out of every single orifice, but you'll still drink it anyway, because what else are you going to do, sober up? Um, the only other news I could really see was the Apple Watch 8 which is set to launch not this year but next year uh, could possibly be able to track your blood alcohol levels for you um, which I mean at least that'll be a fun day of testing and that is basically it but full disclosure I did shoot this video on Wednesday this week because my schedule has gone completely up the spout uh, so inevitably all of the tech news is going to happen on Thursday I guarantee it some big shit will happen like LG will announce that the whole mobile phones thing was just a, a big ruse and it's actually going to launch 20 new phones in June or you know Apple will just explode or something but anyhow enough fannying about inevitably it is the time for the part of the show that's about as joyful as a Werner Herzog documentary about cancer of the cock. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. <laughs> now apologies again for the stupidly long intro last week. I have been huffing a little bit too much hand sanitizer unfortunately in my spare time. Uh, yeah I think that an entire portion of my brain around this area here is just basically shut down or given up entirely. Uh, so Kath Evans says please no more hippie shit style intros just continue to give us tech talk and banter. Consider yourself tech talked and bantered at. Uh, Rapids444 says the intro was slightly disturbing. Uh, Jed Bullet says I made my wife watch the intro with her eyes closed. Now she won't speak to me. Soz about that, Jed. Uh, I do have Mr. Wangsock if you want to borrow him for the night. Uh, Jimmy gets me though. Uh, credit where it's due. Three minutes of drawn out bollocks to deliver a your mum gag. Respect. Yep, possibly the longest your mum gag in history. I'm going to have to write to, to Guinness about that one, aren't I? As in the world records chaps, not the uh, the, the brewery. Although, you know what, if they want to like sponsor me or something, I wouldn't say no to that. Uh, lots, lots more comments about it. Uh, Pepper Butt says, hey, while you're doing my mum, can you remind her to buy some milk? We're out of milk. Yeah, sorry dude, she can't hear me too well. She's a bit of a screamer, your mum. Uh, Eric says, bro, what shots did you get? You sound more damaged than usual. I love it. Uh, you know, just the usual blend of whiskey, tequila and absinthe. Everything a grown boy needs. Uh, David Ashmore says, instructions unclear. Took up smoking and bought an iPhone. Oh, David. Uh, Neil B says, how relaxing the start was. I nearly fell asleep and missed the main feature of you rambling on about nothing. Fair fucks. Uh, but the thought of you in a lake with my mum was not so good as she's been dead for some years now. Ah uh, yeah, that's, uh, apologies, that's probably proper nightmare fuel right there, isn't it? Uh, moving swiftly on, uh, next up, Doomreb says, what's with the lack of these so-called retro gaming handsets when it comes to more 3D stuff, like N64, PS1 and GameCube, all the proper like 64-bit shenanigans? Yeah, definitely, 100%. I, as much as I love like the old Spectrum, Commodore classics, all of that, I get the fill of those pretty swiftly usually. It'd be great to relive some of those PlayStation classics. Good bit, you know, like the Resident Evils, the Silent Hills, Dino Crisis 2, I used to absolutely adore. And of course you can do all that on your laptop or whatever but to be able to do it like wherever you go even on the bogs that would be bloody brilliant and they did the playstation 1 classic which was just a tiny little uh, console designed to hook up to your tv if you can do it's something like that then surely they can do it just a handheld version with the screen right but none of this 20 pre-installed games and then you're done bollocks you'd have to have to you know the ability to stick in a memory card just loaded with roms and play whatever you want i don't know you can do playstation emulation on the nintendo switch which i guess is kind of the same thing but apparently it's quite janky i've never actually tried it i'll have to give that a go sometime report back and next up michael says how come you're using an iphone are you chris's evil twin um, I think I am the evil twin, mate. There's probably some really prissy, goody, two-shoes version of me who goes around not drinking and not seeing c*** all the time. And on the same subject, Keybaum says, Love the Apple bashing while holding an iPhone 12 mini yourself. Long-term review incoming. And yes, you 100% guessed that correctly. That little beauty went live earlier in the week. Uh, I just thought I'd revisit some older phones uh, while I had a bit of a gap in the phone launch schedule. Of course, that is coming crash into a halt next week. Spoiler alert. Uh, next up, Amir says, my personal question is, are you a single parent? Uh, I am not, thank Christ, because uh, I really do not know how single parents 
cope in all honesty. There isn't enough alcohol on this planet, surely. A good bit of Bradford love in the comments as well. Christian says, I'm actually from Bradford. Uh, Chris Dyson says, loving the shout out for Bradford. Hashtag Bradford. Excellent. I have to remember to use hashtag Bradford when I'm promoting the show. Uh, hands up though, I've never actually been to Bradford, been in that area a few times, good old Leeds and stuff of course, but never set foot in the lovely uh, township of Bradford. So definitely have to add it to the list for the Techspert World Tour when the world's a bit less plaguey. And by Techspert World Tour, I basically mean I'm just going to visit these places, go to the cheapest bar I can find, probably good old Spoonies of course, prop up the bar and drink all of the beer. And next up, uh, Juso, Juso, sorry, probably completely more the pronunciation of that, says, talking about the weather here in Finland, it was minus three and snowing. And yeah, at times like that, basically lockdowns are just all academic, aren't they? Because basically outside can go f***ing do one. And I know I used to live up in the northeast of England and, you know, I'd be there on a Friday night in December in the middle of a blizzard in my short sleeve shirt. Be like, oh, it's a little bit nippy today or whatever. I mean, you know, you'd have your beer jacket on and all that, but I just couldn't do that anymore. I've been down south far too long. I've basically turned into a massive pussy. So as soon as it looks a little bit blustery out there, I'm like, oh, get the hat and the coat on and all that. Uh, next up, uh, Fukuchan Ryoko says, Greetings from bloody Germany, where the weather is almost as crap as England. Yeah, we are kind of kindred spirits when it comes to the, the shitness and greyness of uh, the everyday weather. Uh, but at least, you know, you've got umpar bands and lederhosen and delicious pretzels and steins of golden nectar and top-notch sausage. Not to lean too heavily on those Bavarian stereotypes or anything. Top-notch sausage. I bet you get some interesting Google results if you type that one in, that's for sure. And no, I'm not going to do that. Just, just no. Uh, next up, Dan says, ill or whiskey? Um, both, please. Uh, I mean, if I had to absolutely choose one of them, it would be ill because these days I have the tolerance of a toddler. So basically, if I started the night on whiskeys, then basically I'd, I'd be face down underneath the table, lying in a pool of my own juices with my pants around my ankles before you can even say bottoms up. Next up, Chris R says, I have a tech question. Am I in the right place? Uh, well, it kind of depends. Chris or whether you want like an accurate or well-informed answer. Personally, you've got to say I prefer banging on about booze or just myself in general, but go on then if you absolutely must. Uh, so the question is, if the if the Lenovo Duet, the Chrome OS tablet with Android apps exists, why isn't there a Chrome OS phone with the same stuff? Well, I guess that Chrome OS was designed specifically to be used with a big screen and like a keyboard and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no reason why, as you say, if the likes of the tablet exist, why it couldn't exist on a smartphone as well, maybe in the form of like the Microsoft Surface Duo or something like that. I do need to get back into reviewing Chromebooks and stuff because they are usually quite popular. And, you know, I do like a good Chromebook as well. But the problem is the good things about Chromebooks, the fact that they're small, light, portable, great battery life, all that stuff. It's great when you can actually go out and visit places, but in, you know, post COVID work from home drudgery, there's just no point. Hopefully that'll change soon here in Blighty though, and we'll start getting actual press events again with free bars, because my God, I've spent so much money on alcohol. I need a good free bar every now and then just to keep me topped up without draining my bloody savings. And next up, Nell Funtime Coops says, am I the only one who thinks of country file when I hear your voice? Uh, <laughs> country file? Are you sure you're not just thinking cunt? I've got to admit, I've never actually seen that show, but if and when inevitably this tech shenanigans all falls on its ass like a fat lad after 15 pints, maybe I'll see if you know, the BBC or someone like that will hire me and say, yeah, I could definitely see myself doing one of those shows, just dicking about in the countryside. I can certainly see myself getting into reviewing, you know, local pubs out in the sticks, always good fun, something straight out of American Werewolf in London. You know, warm flat beer, check. Angry looking patrons, check. Snarling dog that attacks you when you get too close, check. Pickled egg and pork pies that gave me the runs for a week. Check. Four disease badges out of five would recommend. Next up, Lemony Snickers says, thoughts on the Izu Zenfone 8 potentially being a punch hole jobby. Um, so yeah, for anyone who missed them, the latest rumors on the Zenfone 8 is that the standard Zenfone 8 model is going to be just a, a standard compact smartphone without the flippy cam, which we had of course on the Zenfone 6 and the Zenfone 7 models. But there will also apparently be a Zenfone 8 Pro of some description, which is a bit bigger and it retains that flip camera. And I've got to say, I would be absolutely torn between the two models because I love compact smartphones that are easy to use one-handed, but I'm also a sucker for silly jazzy tech like the flip-up camera that then becomes the selfie cam. Means, of course, then you've got no punch hole, you've got a full view experience up front. 
uh, which is great. And I'm always a sucker for you know silly things like like the, the old pop-up selfie cams, which were always very entertaining and sadly all but extinct these days. But that launches next week, uh, and more on that towards the end of the show. So stay tuned for all you need to know on that bad boy. Our next comment is from Wolf Kruger, which by the way that is a kick-ass name. You've got like a ferocious wild animal and the best stabby serial killer movie villain of all time. So yeah, if that's your real name, then you know kudos to your parents, mate. That is that is quality. Uh, Wolf says, why as a male in my 50s do I find the word willy funny? Because it just is. It's just inherently hilarious. It's one of those inexplicable things uh, like why is James Corden still on TV and why is Mrs. Brown's boys keep getting renewed for another bloody series. Now next up, Wizard says, any news about the new Xperia's release date? It's absolutely bugger all, I'm afraid. Early summer is still uh, all that we've got to go on, so that could mean anything from next month to probably August. I mean, when is the British summertime? Let's face it, it's always a sketchy little grey area somewhere in the middle of the year, but let's face it, it's just as rainy and miserable as the rest of it, so it's kind of hard to tell. Ah, oh, Sony, I love you, but you, you you love to keep us in suspense, don't you, you buggers? And next up, Riru says, do you think that the new Xperia 5 Mark III is worth the money, or should I buy the Mark II when the price drops? I mean, it's such a short amount of time between the two, like six months. I know Sony always used to, uh, you know, release two flagship phones a year and everything, but yeah, there's not a huge gulf in terms of the actual specs, the hardware, the features between them. Some of those new camera features, I do wonder if they will come to the Mark II in an update anyway. So my sort of early feeling is that just buy the Mark II, but of course I haven't touched the Mark III, let alone, you know, had a proper play with it yet. It might be that some of the, you know, the performance boosts, some of the extra features and stuff are well worth uh, the extra cost so stay tuned i'm afraid on that one and i've absolutely run out of time yet again so i made this the last one uh johanna says that you're slowly descending into madness and it's a magnificent sight to behold um, I'm not really sure about the slowly bit, uh, but the rest of it sounds legit. And I suppose if nothing else, then Techspert Weekly will prove some sort of form of documentation of my slippery slides down that slope into just utter bat shitness. I should probably go back and look at episode one, which I shot, I think it was just before the whole COVID pandemic thing broke out. I'll probably look at a lot less haggard and like dead behind the eyes. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone who commented last week. It was brilliant reading your comments. Please do comment down below as well. And we'll get through as many of those as possible in the next week. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Moi. And speaking of next week, so yeah, this, this week, absolute radio silence. Next week, all of the phones and other tech as well. Starting on Tuesday the 11th, Asus is launching some very sexy new laptops. You can expect some Republic of Gamer uh, laptop uh, gaming shenanigans and also some creator notebooks thrown into the mix as well. So that'll be a big day for laptop fans. Uh, but their big launch is Wednesday the 12th. Asus is going to be back at it with some new Zen phones, the new Zen Phone 8. Expect two new models, possibly a Zen Phone 8 and a Zen Phone 8 Pro. And I might have a tasty bit of video action uh, ready to go for you on that one, so stay tuned for all of that. Uh, also that day, the Realme 8 5G is launching here in the UK as well. So again, expect some hands-on shenanigans. A day later, Thursday the 13th, ZT will be launching the fresh new ZT Accent 30 Ultra, which is a proper beefcake flagship smartphone with some bat mental camera tech. So if you drop by Techspert on Thursday, again, you might see a bit of hands-on video action. And then after all of that, on Friday, of course, good old Techspert Weekly. Join me noon on Friday, as always, if I'm already passed out in a f***ing pool of my own blood and feces by then. So yeah, it's going to be pretty relentless. Expect that notifications uh, bell of yours to be dinging non-stop, because of course you have poked the, uh, the notifications bell thing, haven't you? As well as the, the subscribe thing. I know you have, because you people are awesome. Have yourselves a fan-bloody-tastic uh, weekend, and I will see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.